Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Moonrakers by Lunar Saloon. It's a 1-5 to five player game that takes roughly 60 to 120 minutes to play, and is for ages 14 and up. And in Moonrakers, this is a cooperative, or I should say semi-cooperative, deck builder. You're going to be utilizing a deck of cards that is going to give you damage and thrusters and reactors in order to basically gain new parts as well as complete contracts. Throughout your turn, you're going to work with allies who will helpfully complete contracts with you to score victory points, gain cards and currency. You'll use the currency to buy cards that will assist in your deck or passives that will benefit you throughout the game. And then you're going to discard the rest of your hand as well as any cards that you played and draw back up to five. And you'll just keep going and the point of the game is to gain prestige or victory points. When somebody hits that coveted 10 victory points at the end of their turn, the game will end and that player will win. There's some tiebreakers, there's things that happen in the game like hazards, and of course all the currency is available to you as well. Well, that's like the basics idea of the game, basically a deck builder that involves working with players. Unique, something different actually. Let's talk about the setup. To set up the game Moonrakers, the first thing you do is you take the two main game boards and you put them adjacent to each other. Then make sure that the red side is on the left and that the purple and the yellow is on the right. You're going to have four decks of cards, contracts, objectives, ship parts, and actions, and you're going to shuffle them individually and place them on these stacks here. The contract deck is going to flip out eight contracts, and the only thing you need to make sure is that the contract's difficulty meter is no more than two. Now, on the bottom right, we'll illustrate what the difficulty is. If it's got one notch, it's a one difficulty, zero, it's a zero, and two, it's a two, and it just goes up from there. Uh, the action deck, deal out three of them after you shuffle the deck, and then the uh, ship parts, deal out six. Once you've got these out, go ahead and then take the hazard dice, place them within reach of some other player. Uh, go ahead and take the credits, the threes and the ones, and place them in the credit slots. And then take each of the player's ships, of the player's choices, and place them on the zero for their prestige, or victory points. There's a bunch of extra cards in the deck, just go ahead and set them out in piles, like shields, reactors, thrusters, both damage one and two, and misses, so that they're available so that anybody can grab them. Each player can then take one of these handy dandy references and set up their board. Their board is going to be a ship terminal that's going to have a color on it. Make sure you take the color of the color of the ship that you placed in the main game board. Give each player two credits from the supply, and then you're going to give each player ten cards. What ten cards? Well, actually, in the bottom of your game board in the middle is going to have an illustration of what cards you take. Three reactors, two thrusters, two shields, two damage ones, and a miss. Take that deck of ten cards, shuffle them all up, and then give each player five cards to form their hand. The objectives here, you're going to get two of them. You'll shuffle that deck, place them in the green area, and deal out two to each player. Have each player select one of these objectives and place the other one on the bottom of the deck so that each player should have one objective, five cards in their deck, five cards in their hand, two credits, and a game board, and a partridge, and a pear tree. Okay, how to play the game. So Moonrakers is played in turns. Basically, you choose a player to start, and then after they finish their turn, it passes to the next player on their left, and it continues clockwise until somebody hits the coveted 10 prestige, and at the end of their turn, they win. When it is a player's turn, they'll have two options. Option one is to complete a contract. Option two is to basically stay at base. You can choose either of these options on your turn. It's really up to you. Let's discuss each of them. Contracts first. To complete a contract, you must first select one of the eight available to you here. To select a contract, you will take it and place it somewhere within reach, and then you will check it. The bottom right is going to be the difficulty and or hazard level. The bottom left is going to be the required cards that need to sit on yours or anybody else's field as long as they're allies with you. And then in the top right are the bonuses you will get. There are three bonuses. One is prestige, the next one is credits, and the final one is going to be a bonus card or bonus cards you can take from the top of these decks here, the action or ship part deck. Selecting a contract is easy. Just pick one. The next part's a little more challenging, selecting allies. 
To select an ally, you'll just say, hey Bill, hey Susan, would you like to help me on this contract? And they can say yes or no. And you can actually haggle with whatever rewards the contract will give. If let's say the, the uh, reward gave you like three credits and a prestige, you can be like, Bill, I'll give you all the credits. You can take all three credits and I'll take the one prestige if you work with me on this. At which point they can haggle with you until you guys come to some agreement or switch cards until you do find some type of agreement. And then you will settle on having to do the contract hopefully with some allies. When you decide on the contract and the allies, you will hopefully have also decided on uh, the hazard dice. Basically, each of these contracts have a hazard bonus. Bonus, I say, right? But really, it's a negative. Uh, if it has a two, like this card here on the bottom, it has a two hazard. You can also negotiate who rolls these dice. So maybe I'll roll one, and maybe Susan will roll one. And these are going to be potentially negative prestige at the end of the turn if players are not able to shield them. So after you have discussed any of the hazards and any of the rewards with players, hopefully you've got some type of posse together, you're going to move on to rolling the hazard dice. Susan will roll hers, I will roll mine, and we will check. There are a potentially one or two hazards per dice or none, uh, and these are going to basically be damage. And if you cannot shield the damage by playing shield cards while taking your turn, you are going to lose prestige at the end of after you play all the cards that you can. Once both players or all players have rolled hazard dice, then you're going to move on to attempting the contract. Attempting a contract is actually pretty easy. You're gonna have a number of cards in hand, starting with five, and then you're going to play cards. Typically the first card you play is going to be a reactor card. This is a card that gives you bonus actions. Since you only have one action to start, and the action is to play a card. So otherwise, any other card that you would play, like a shield or a thruster or a miss, these are cards that cost an action and would end your turn instantly. So you're gonna to wanna to play basically thrusters, um, uh, after you play reactors, because thrusters will let you draw a card. So how it works like is I can play a reactor. That gives me two actions. So I go from one to zero, but this gives me two, so now I have two again. A thruster, okay, now I'm down to one action. And a damage, and now I'm down to zero actions. And that is how you play your, like you play your turn in order to try and solve the contracts. So at the bottom left of the contracts is the colors of cards you need to have between you and your allies. So if I played a reactor and I also played a shield, that would complete this contract. Some of them are easier than others, whereas some of them are more difficult, requiring you to play, oh, I don't know, four thrusters, four damage, and three reactors. The only thing unique about playing these cards down um, is the damage can be one or possibly two, depending on what you have in your deck. But otherwise, it's a one for one trade. So on your turn, in order to complete a contract, you play one action and that's to play a card. And you play as best as you can, creating kind of a pyramid to keep track of your actions. I'll go over the cards really quick. First one is miss, it doesn't do anything, great. Then you have damage. You can either do one damage with a card or two. Depends on which one you get, which one you play. Thrusters let you draw two cards from the deck, but that's useless unless you have actions. So you're gonna need reactors. Reactors will give you an extra two actions when you play the card, but do cost an action to play. And the final one is a shield. Well, you know what shields do. They are what prevent the hazards. At the end of the, your turn, if let's say I had two of these uh, nasty hazards and I never played a shield, I'm gonna lose two prestige from my ship. So you have to be very, very aware of that. You can choose the order in which players or allies are able to take the action uh, and, and go throughout the turn on your turn. So if I'm the leader and I have Susan and Bob here, Bob, you go first, then Susan, and then I'll cover the rest. You just can't really explain what cards are in your hand. I mean, there are certain rules in which you can change the game up if you would like, but the idea is you play to try and complete the contract, you choose the order in which you want the players in your posse to go through the actions, and then at the end, you check to see what's on the field. Did you complete the contract? If you did, you are going to gain the bonus of whatever the card says based on the fair distribution that you selected. Now, players do not actually have to help you as, as allies. I don't know why they wouldn't, but there are, I guess there are some reasons why they wouldn't. Uh, but if they all did successfully complete the objective with you, you must pay them what you, what you said you would. Credits come from the bank here. The bonus card is gonna come from the top of the action deck or the top of the ship part deck. And then the prestige is going to basically be a point. You'll move your ship from the location you were previously at 
up a number of spaces equal to the prestige that you gained. After you have gained any rewards, uh, you can also check to uh, see if you have to subtract any prestige, you, whatever you lose from not being able to shield the hazard die that you rolled. Now, each player has their own dice that they roll based on whatever agreement you came with. So if you never rolled any of these hazard dice and it was your turn, but you actually made Bill and Susan have to roll them, you don't have to worry about it, but they will. And based on the shields that they play will determine how many points they may or may not lose. After that, you're basically done with your contract, and now you'll go to the next phase, which is you can go ahead and purchase any ship parts or any of the crew or actions. Each of these have a credit cost on the bottom right-hand side. If they are a crew card, they will actually go into your discard pile to be used later as an action card, uh, basically just like any of your other ones, your damage thrusters and reactors. Um, and they're going to say what they do. So this guy here, he is a redacted. You can play him as a shield and you can reroll any number of the hazard dice that you previously rolled when you play him. Or maybe you're gonna run this one here, Dana Powalki. This is play as a one damage three and you also get a bonus action when you play her. So she kind of comes into play for free. There are also these wonderful ship parts. You'll notice on your game board that there are four spaces that you can place ship parts. As long as you pay the bottom right hand side cost, which in this case, this one would be four credits. And this one has a specific type to it. This is a monogamy, or mognomy, there you go. Um, it will tell you what type it is. It will tell you how much it costs and then what passive ability you get with these guys. Some of them will say like at the start of a contract, you get plus two cards if you don't have any damage cards in your hand. Other ones will just make you roll one less hazard dice or maybe you'll get a bonus to your actions. They're all different. They all have their own unique subtypes and they all benefit you in different ways. Regardless, you can only ever have four of them. And if you need, you can always discard one you have when buying a new one to replace it. Basically, changing these guys out, which will actually happen on the occasion. Then after you have bought your stuff, you're going to discard any cards that you have played, any cards still in your hand, if there are any, and then you're going to draw a new hand of five cards. And your turn will pass and I'll go to the next player. Now the other action you can take if you don't want to complete a contract, which now that you know completing a contract is just choosing one of these guys, getting some allies, uh, rolling the dice that are hazards, then everybody does their one action, which hopefully leads into more actions, Afterwards, complete it, gain the benefits, buy the cards, and draw a new hand and pass. The other option is to stay at base. How that works is pretty simple. You're actually going to take one credit, so it's like a bonus little credit you get. You'll draw two objective cards. You'll select one of them, and then you are going to uh, discard your hand and, or yeah, basically your hand of five cards and draw. Um, you're also, I forgot almost, I forgot, you're also able to discard one of the contracts here and put a new one out if you would like. Whenever you get rid of a card at the end of the turn, you're going to replace it and contracts will just come out as soon as you get rid of them. And those are the two things that you can do. You're either gonna stay at base and kind of recuperate, get rid of contracts you don't like, draw a new hand if you need to, or you're going to attempt a, a contract. Uh, the only thing I didn't really discuss is objectives. So now that you know you, you start with one, you draw two and pick one at the beginning of the game, and then whenever you stay at base, you'll get to draw two and pick one. What are these? Well, these are all one, uh, one prestige. The bottom right-hand side, it tells you, just like on the contracts, what you get for completing them. And they're all going to have requirements. Maybe you need three yellow parts on your ship for the point. Or maybe you need to complete a kill contract all by yourself. And each of the contracts, like here, kill slavers. If you complete this, you can complete this objective to give yourself a bonus prestige. Or maybe it's a quick run, in which case you complete a delivery mission alone. Uh, and so whenever you complete these at the end of your turn, after you subtract any damage that you suffer from hazards, you're then gonna get one of these prestige points for completing the contract. So you'll never actually like lose prestige for completing contracts until maybe the next turn. And that's the game. That's how the game plays Moonrakers. It's a pretty simple, straightforward game with some unique twists and turns to it. Let's talk about what I think. Okay, while well, Moonrakers is high quality excellence deck building at its finest, the quality of the game is excellent. Uh, the beautiful artwork that works with the game feels good. You understand what it's meant for. You understand that you are a ship piloting out in space, trying to complete contracts, kind of feel a little bit like the guys in Serenity or Firefly. And you're just trying to complete contracts, upgrade your ship and deal with yourself as much as you can. You'll have to work with allies that are actually kind of against you as well, trying to 
complete their own contracts, and so you'll kind of form this love-hate bond with these people that are in the group. This game has a lot to offer. It is wonderful. I love this game. Uh, this is obviously a one to five player game. There's a single player mode, which includes a mercenary. And when, when you, whenever you play two players, because you might wonder, like, how does two players play? Well, there's a mercenary character, and it basically is not a character. It's a group of cards that is ever changing from round to round or after every player takes their turn that's going to have available options to you like there will be certain characters that you can select from the mercenary that is also changing as well as the different like you'll have like a deck for the mercenary that comes out and you can work with them by spending points in order to utilize their cards or I should say credits and also prestige to use their crew member cards to complete these specific contracts so that you can work with maybe one member on the team as well as the mercenary to complete a more difficult challenge. Anyway, play this game at three or more players for sure. It's way better. I love the cooperation and the kind of backstabbiness to the game. It's got this light backstabbiness where you can be like giving them not the greatest deals when they're kind of... Uh, requesting a little too much. Uh, you can kind of dip out if you don't like the idea of trying to help somebody get to their last few victory points, making them kind of have to work for it. And then uh, there's a nice way of balancing the game with other players being willing to help other players to get to the top. And then once everybody's at the top, there's a fight based on how well they made their ship to complete a final objective. Other players may not be able to complete something and they might just stay at the base to remove an objective that they think you can complete. Or maybe people are trying to just get an objective for their last and final point to secure in order to win the game. This has deck building, this has a little bit of management as far as how you manage your currency to get your ship parts, and then it's got this kind of tense negotiation feel for it. Now, of course, this is just the base game and it comes with, there's four other expansions, I think there are three or four that come with this game that I've heard are all good and work individually and some combinations of them, but probably not all of them at once. I'm gonna be playing that as well and I'll give a brief review video probably next week for each of them in a singular video, but just talking about Moonrakers in and of itself, if you like deck builders, if you like tense negotiation games, something that's kind of a, it's like a lighter type of deck builder because there's only maybe about six or five cards here that you're going to be mainly having in your deck with the odd and end of a crew member popping up and helping you as well. It is really, really good. I love the pyramid scheme of playing the cards down and trying to gain bonus actions. Reactor, draw two. Reactor, play a damage, play a damage, play a reactor, draw two. And trying to dump your deck out, trying to make sure that your deck combos well with itself, that works with the ship parts. Maybe it's whenever you play a this or that, you gain a this or that, and your deck is based on this or that. It just feels good. Having your characters work with your ship parts that are also based on the deck that you get. And remember, when you play a ship part out the top right hand side of this card here, it will tell you what you take in uh, from your deck here. There's like specific types of uh, bonuses, bonus cards you'll get from here that you'll put into your deck. And um, that's also a nice little way to kind of build onto your deck by taking ship parts. So when you take a ship part, not only do you get the bonus, but you also get bonus cards. And if you want, you can get rid of this ship part because maybe the only reason you wanted it was for the bonus damage that it gave you or the bonus shields that it gave you for your deck. Yeah, it's great. I mean, there's not a whole lot negative to say about this game, honestly. This is definitely one of my favorite deck builders of the year. Um, and I think there's a little bit older a title. I don't know if it came out this year or last year or not, but I'm going to be keeping this one. It's it's excellent. I love the quality. I love the idea of negotiation and a deck builder. I like the idea of it being cutthroat, but also a little bit friendly. And it has that way to like bump people up is nice. And then, of course, there are additional little expansions that I've heard nothing but good things about quality of these all the components oh, I, I don't know I, i'm gonna stop gushing its praises but yes this is getting my seal of approval hands down did an excellent job with this game i thoroughly enjoy it and i love all the little intricacies you'll find throughout the game as you play thank you guys for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review for the game moonrakers if you're interested in picking it up there's a link down below in the description and if you support us and love us and maybe you've just watched one or or two videos before please consider i know i almost never do this i'm not gonna lie but if you'd hit the subscribe button, it would greatly help us out. It keeps us making videos. It makes me think people are still watching me. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, guys. 
And as always, I will look forward to allying with you to screw you over next time. <laughs>